Welcome to Basic Brewing Radio for Thursday, December 5th, 2013. I'm James Spencer. Here at Basic Brewing Radio, we're all about home brewing. This week, Saison with fruit. Home brewer Brian Gold joins us to share some award-winning beers based on the Saison style. Uh, we'll get Brian's tips on brewing them, and Steve Wilkes will join me to sample. If you're new to home brewing and would like to get into the hobby for the first time, check out our website, basicbrewing.com where you can find archives of our audio and video podcasts and our DVDs to walk you through basic and more advanced brewing techniques. And those DVDs are on sale for Christmas. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. My username is Basic Brewing, all one word. Also, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash basicbrewing.james. Our show page on Facebook is at facebook.com slash basicbrewing. We're on Google Plus, too. Thanks to everybody clicking on the Amazon.com associate link on our BasicBrewing.com site, especially during this busy, busy holiday season. Whenever you think of Amazon shopping, go to our website first. Click on our Amazon ad on the right-hand side of the page. That will take you to Amazon.com. There you can shop to your heart's content, and uh, we will get a commission off of that. And it won't cost you any extra, but it really helps this show. We also have associate links for Brew Your Own Magazine and the American Home Brewers Association on our site, too, that work the same way. Our basic brewing iPhone app is on iTunes, and our Android app is on Amazon.com. We're on the BlackBerry podcast directory, we're on the Stitcher app, and we're on the Windows phone directory, too. A bunch of you are getting our brewer's logbooks at basicbrewingshop.com. Uh, as you know, the front is a blank calendar that you can use to track your fermentations and plan your brews. And there is room in the back of the book to log the details of up to 50 batches of beer. Uh, we're, it's, it's interesting. We're getting a bunch of those orders in. And uh, the, the names on the, uh, the orders turn uh, feminine in the holiday season. So I think that uh, Santa Claus is at work through his helpers. If you want to put a tip in our tip jar, some coinage in our guitar case, you can go to basicbrewing.com slash support. And thanks to everybody who has done so already. Not saying that all homebrewers are guys, but the vast majority, at least the, the vast majority who listen to this podcast are guys. Uh, <laughs> backpedaling during the intro to the show. Protect your precious beer with one of our growler bags. We've still got some of those left. Check out those at basicbrewingshop.com. Now, uh, there is a new video on the Basic Brewing feed and our, on our YouTube channel. It's kind of different. It's not really an episode of the podcast. It's, it's just a Thanksgiving extra for your enjoyment. Uh, so if you haven't seen that, go out there and take a look at it. In this, Steve and I sample some ghost pepper jelly that uh, listener Rick sent in uh, to us. And uh, it's hot. <laughs> it is hot. Uh, I, I proved in the video that I apparently have a higher threshold of pain than Steve does. And Steve proves that he is hilarious when he eats hot food. So you just got to go go see that and uh, watch it all the way to the end. Uh, don't forget to send in your homebrew disaster stories. Uh, I've already gotten several, and we've got some doozies this year already. And Steve and I will be recording that episode before long. We haven't set a firm date yet, but uh, but get your homebrew disaster story in soon to james at basicbrewing.com or use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. we got a lot of great stuff to cover today, so let's get to it. It's a tasty show with a lot of really good information on brewing these beers. So let's talk to Brian Gold. Brian Gold, welcome to Basic Brewing Radio. Thank you, James. It's glad to be on. We met uh, at the National Homebrewers Conference, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes, it was very good. Um, I had a good time, and uh, it was a real, real pleasure to be there. A real honor to meet you as well. Oh well, thanks. And uh, you, you said that you were you were thinking about brewing up a beer, and uh, that came to fruition. And you sent sent Steve and me a big old box of beers, and uh, uh, we're going to go through uh, some of those that you sent. And so, thanks very much for doing that. Oh, my pleasure. No problem at all. So we're talking about saisons. Uh, let's start with the, the base beer, uh, the one that you, you started from and built upon. Um, a very tasty beer, as, you, as we'll hear in just a few minutes. Uh, but talk about the recipe. Talk about your, your brewing technique. Sure, sure. So um, 
I, I really kind of got fascinated with saisons because they're such a simple beer to brew, especially in Arizona where you, you have to have temperature control to brew good beer here. There's there's no question about it. And so, you know, all the reading I, I've i done says, yeah, you know, saisons, you, you can pitch in the 70s and let it rip. And I said, well, this is perfect for Arizona. So the, uh, the first couple that I brewed, I, I did feel, and I did just that oxygenated properly, you know, pitched in the 70s and let it ride. And I always found that the fermentation character on them was just way over the top. And it wasn't bad. It was just very intense. So I, um, I, I basically stuck with the same recipe. But in, in this case, I tried to initially keep the fermentation character subdued, but still be very um, recognizable as a saison. Uh, so I, I actually cooled it down to 55, and I pitched a liquid slurry of Bella Cezanne at that temperature and then let it free rise to 74 and held it there. And it, uh, I had an experience with this yeast. Uh, I got the packet in the, in the little goodie bag at the homebrewers conference. Uh, and, uh, after summer or as summer was ending, I decided I'm going to, I'm going to take this packet of yeast and I'm going to brew something with it. And I wound up just kind of doing what I called a spur of the moment Cezanne that we've talked about on the show. Yeah, that's great. And uh, I was impressed with it. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it fermented really well, and it, I, I like the flavor characteristics that I got. Even though my basement uh, at that time was in the mid to upper sixties uh, Fahrenheit, um, okay. so which would be hmm, around twenty degrees, seventeen to twenty degrees Celsius, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I'm interested to you know now that it's it's getting cooler. I'm kind of interested to try it again. Uh, so, so what differences did you find starting uh, at that lower temperature? I felt that the uh, the phenolics were much more reduced, but the overall aroma of the beer just didn't jump out of the glass and and yell saison at you. Um, <laughs> it's the best. It's the, it's the only way I can really think of it. It was just there, but it was much more subdued. More more my style of a saison, you know, everybody's palate's a little different. Um, but I prefer it a little bit more subdued and talk about your grain bill. Sure. So, um, it's really straightforward. Um, I got about 82% Pilsner malt. Um, there's 80, I'm sorry, 8% Munich, 8% Vienna. Um, there's just a little dash 1% of crystal 60, and 1% of acidulated malt. And I, I use the acidulated malt to keep the, keep the mash pH in check. So it sounds like a fairly uh, traditional uh, malt bill from, from what I've read. Um, more, more traditional than what I wound up going with, but uh, <laughs> they both work. Uh, so sure. if, you're, if you're listening and, and you don't have that on hand and uh, you're thinking of brewing a Saison and or don't have easy access to to uh, some of these. Don't worry about it. Just brew what you got. What about hops? What I did for hops is I I happen to have some, and some people might laugh at me, but I had some older cluster hops that were about a year old, and they weren't open, but they were still you know perfectly good. And I thought you know cluster hops. I mean you know the the big breweries used to use them, um, and I, I thought you know this would be kind of perfect. They're kind of a little earthy, a little rustic, if you will. And I thought that that'd be appropriate for the style. And um, to give you an idea, I used uh, two ounces in, this was a, um, a 12 gallon batch and uh, which turned out to be about 25 IBUs. And that was a 90 minute edition. So, I mean, this style is not, a, not about hops generally anyway. It's all about the yeast. That's uh, correct. But I'm looking at your recipe. I'm cheating. I'm looking at your recipe uh, but you also used uh, one of my favorite hops at the uh, at the end. Yeah, I wanted to give that a whirl, and I added some Amarillo at zero minutes. And uh, just one ounce, just a little touch, to add just a little bit more complexity to the hops. So it is the as the beer has, uh, has been in the bottle for a while, have you seen it uh, change in character over time? Um, interesting. I let's I'll put it this way. Um, 
I bottled off the keg for the bottles that I sent you of the base beer. Um, the other beers, the ones with the additions, uh, those were bottle conditioned. And so I did notice that this beer changed drastically in the keg over its lifetime in the kegerator. And it did sit in the kegerator for about three months. Hmm. Um, it, it took on a, I don't, I don't know how to ex- describe it really, but it took on a little bit of a, um, like when you smelled it, the, a lot of the fermentation character that was originally there kind of went away and it turned, you could smell it and you could swear you were smelling a cider. Hmm. It was very bizarre. Very bizarre. Um, but it still seemed to do pretty well in a competition, which I was a little blown away about. But Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at your notes. It took second place in the Arizona Oktoberfest competition. Yes, that's correct. So pretty good. <laughs> Thank you. Now, um, should we, and I guess the ABV turned out to be about 5%, 5.2%. So uh, yep. that's a, that's yep, a nice this, gravity. That's correct. Um. Well, what do you think? Let's go. Shall we go to the tasting? Let, we, uh, Steve and I sat down uh, and tasted four of your beers uh, based on this uh, base recipe uh, after we shot our uh, mole, uh, mole stout chili res- uh, uh, episode of Basic Brewing Video recently. So let's go back to the past and sit down with Steve. Steve Wilkes, welcome back to your house. Thanks. It's good to be back at my house. <laughs> We just shot the uh, Mole uh, episode of uh, Basic Brewing Video with all that Mexican food. Woo! Yeah. Man. Chili and pozole and pinto beans and a couple of chili rellenos. Heaven. So we're on a timer here. <laughs> <laughs> Before rude things start happening, we <laughs> we need to get this done. <laughs> well, Man. that Mole beer was just killer good. So, oh well, thank you. Congratulations. Well, everything else, the food was just awesome, and uh, whoo, it's, it's a good pairing though because it was a little, you know, like the pepper tasted like burning, tastes like burning, <laughs> and the mole <laughs> beer kind of put out the fire a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Okay, what are we doing? We're drinking beer. I know that. What are we doing? <laughs> we have in front of us from listener Brian. Uh, we have. Uh, some saison based beers mm. and the first one is just the saison itself and i'm okay. opening the cheat sheet yeah this saison uh <clears throat> took second place in the arizona oktoberfest competition wow so i know that you hate it when i bring you award-winning homebrew to sample mm-hmm. in your yeah. own home yeah i hate it but we poured a couple of fingers of this in in the glass just to taste mm-hmm. so Taste away. So away we go. Okay. Oh, that is delish. Mm. Oh. Oh. That's really nice. Yeah, and disclaimer, uh, he sent two sets of these, and I've already consumed the other set. So (laughs) (laughs) I've tested them before. That's the kind of friend you are. (laughs) Well, I wanted to make sure it's okay before I brought them over to your house. Oh, you're like the official taster, just to make sure. Yeah, I was was vetting them. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but no this is this is uh is very um saisonish. I mean it's very saisonish. Yeah. but one of the things that struck me was that it doesn't have that just terrible barnyard kick that a lot of saisons have which I I, I say terrible I meant emphatic mm-hmm. not not terrible because I I like that kick but I like the this one has kind of just enough it's like mm-hmm. the horse is small <laughs> <laughs> It's a small pile. It's a small. It's a small. <laughs> it's just a pony. <laughs> no, but it, it's it's a little it's a little sweet, mm-hmm. which is probably appropriate for the style. Um, oh, that's very drinkable beer. Yeah, but very nice, mm-hmm. very nice, very subtle, and uh, like you said, it's not. It, it's got a bit of the barnyard in there, but not enough. Um, you know, this could be a, a gateway beer to uh, <clears throat> to. Belgian styles, I think. Sure, good. Um, everything about it seems to be a nice balance. Um, it might be a little sweet in terms of other saison, like commercial saisons I've had mm. that tend to be drier than this. I'm, I don't even mean that as a criticism because I like this beer a lot. It's, it's just a little sweeter than I would have expected. But boy, is this a delightful beer! 
And to be fair, we I poured these a couple of minutes ago, so the carbonation may have ah. may have expired a bit. So uh -huh. so the carbonation probably would have helped uh, in that a bit. But but again, not mm. not a knock. It, no, not tasty, at all. very nice. It's really got that nice um, kind of banana y Belgian thing going on there. You can really get the Belgian yeast out of it, especially as it starts to warm a little bit. Mm. Uh, boy, delightful. It's not a lot of banana, though. No, 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 no. It's not like a Hefeweizen. No, no, not at all. It's but just, there is a little bit of banana. There's a little. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it alone. Leave it alone. <laughs> I got a pony and a banana. I don't need anything else. <laughs> Let me out, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> what else do you have? <laughs> Are you through with the two fingers there? No, almost. Okay. Well, now what the ch I have I have more beers and I have a bit of a challenge, which is it's probably a pretty good challenge. Okay. A fun challenge, if nothing else. That's right. Uh, but the uh, Brian has added fruit to uh, this base saison, <clears throat> so that we can. Um, Taste these other beers and see what we like. A fruity saison. All right, so so pretty good on the on the uh, the base beer. We thought it was really nice. Um, it, we weren't overblown uh, by the uh, you know the funkiness of it, uh, but there was enough there to be uh, interesting. Uh, I don't remember getting any cider notes. You mentioned those before, but uh, very nice. We were impressed. Well, thank you. Um, one thing that always has surprised me about saisons is their ability to, or the yeast has the ability to add this, I guess you could say, artificial body to the beer. So uh, to give you an example, the, the original gravity in this beer was uh, 1.044, and the final gravity was 1.004. Wow. So extremely dry, but the beer didn't, you know, it doesn't taste dry, it, or it's dry for saison, but it still has quite a big mouthfeel to it. Yeah, that's surprising to me. And it wasn't, you know, overcarbonated, so uh, it wasn't like we were getting a lot of body from the bubbles. Correct. Interesting. So you took this nice base beer, uh, and you decided to play with it a little bit uh, by adding some fruit. And now uh, here, a couple or, or a couple weeks ago, uh, as we're, or actually in the episode that I'm going to, we're, we're recording before Thanksgiving, so I'm going <laughs> to... I was going to try to play <laughs> play the time game, but I'm I'm going to be I'm just going to because I'll get confused. Uh, we record it. We're recording this uh, the week before Thanksgiving. So the episode that I actually posted today, uh, I it had a, a bit of a rant on um, people criticizing our uh, not sticking with styles from uh, adding beans to chili uh, to to not putting enough uh, honey in our in our uh, braggots. Uh, to you know, putting other kinds of fruit in graph. So, are there going to be uh, purists out there that are going to say that fruit doesn't belong in saisons? Do you think? Well, you know, <clears throat> the, <laughs> I think there's always going to be somebody who who disagrees with a certain uh, a certain topic, if you will. But you know, the saisons were you know, short for season, and uh, you know, I. It was just appropriate for me being in Arizona to put the fruits that I did in it. So styles be darned. <laughs> That's my opinion. If it tastes good, drink it. <laughs> so very nice. Um, the, well, the uh, this pr well we start with another award-winning beer. This this beer also took second place in the uh, Arizona Oktoberfest competition. But what category did you enter it in? I entered it in the fruit beer category. Well, there you go. Um, so you didn't you didn't have anything to do with the category itself. Didn't have anything to do with saisons anyway. Correct. Uh, so, what's our first fruit? Uh, the first fruit I used was prickly pear. And now, these were now oh. the, not the pr not the cactus itself, right? Now, now those are the the kind of paddle looking cacti uh, that you see in uh, well, that, we, we see correct. in Western movies, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're the uh, you know the knee high or waist high, paddle shaped cacti. But then in every July, you see their fruits start to form, and they form green. And then into August, into late August, early September, they turn to this nice deep dark maroon color. And 
just when the birds start eating them all, you know it's time to pick them. <laughs> what kind of flavor characteristics do you get from those? Oh, it's very unique. I've never tasted anything like it. And um, it's very, I guess you could say earthy and rustic. It's kind of sweet, but it's it's probably one of the most unique flavors I've ever tasted. And when I first tasted the prickly pear by itself, I said, I'm not sure this even belongs in a beer, but you know, I'm going to give it a shot. Well, obviously it was successful. Uh, how did you prepare the fruit? Uh, so how I, I prepared it by, well, first I was very fortunate enough to listen to your fruit juicer experiment like two days prior to actually doing this, which worked out very well. So <laughs> keep in mind, I had the base beer already brewed and done. And um, I added, um, I basically chopped the ends of each prickly pear off and sliced it down the center and I rolled out the outside of the prickly pears has all the thorns in it. Mm-hmm. And they're very fine, um, almost microscopic like thorns. I rolled that out of the way and got to the the meat of the fruit, if you will, on the inside, and I just scooped that out. So no pasteurization, no pureeing, no no freezing. You just put it into a <clears throat> secondary. Um, thank you for mentioning the freezing. I <laughs> measured out <laughs> I measured out one pound. And for everybody listening, I did uh, a pound per gallon on these experiments. Um, I measured out one pound, and I stuck it in the freezer overnight. And the following day is when I put it into the secondary. There you go. That's good information. I always forget to ask how much fruit, uh, what's the, what the fruit ratio is. Um, so the, so uh, you did these, did you ferment these in one-gallon jugs, or what did you use? I did. And in, in fact, um, this is definitely home brewer style. I had recently brewed a cider with you know, uh, inexpensive apple juice. And uh, we won't talk about that one. But the, the, <laughs> the jugs that were left over were perfect. They were, you know, um, the proper recycling code, if you will, for an alcoholic beverage. And um, they were crystal clear. I said, these are perfect, and they're all one-gallon jugs, and I had five of them. And I said, this is, this is a great opportunity. And so did you have to, since the, the prickly pear was frozen, did you have to chop it up to get it in, into the, the top of the jugs? Yes, actually. Um, the prickly pears on the inside, they're really, like, mealy, and they have these little black seeds inside them. And in the process of me scooping them out, um, they kind of did fall apart, and it got to the point where they were, after they thawed out of the freezer, everything broke down, and I was almost able to pour it into the fermenter. Oh, nice! That worked out very well. Well, that's the theory. You put them in. You put the fruit in the freezer to break down the cell walls mm-hmm. uh, to get access to the good stuff. And I guess it sounds like that's what happened. Yeah, it worked very well. Uh, so you had? Did you have a refermentation after that? Yes. Um, all all the all the different experiments I did acted a little bit differently. This one did referment, um, but it was one of the lesser ones. Hmm. So you uh, you bottled and and uh, sent one of the bottles, to, or actually two of the bottles, to us. And uh, <laughs> I drank one of my on my own, as I own up to uh, in the recording. But um, I didn't. I sat down with Steve. And and I wanted him to guess what each fruit was. I didn't expect him uh, to get this one. Uh, so here's here's the recording. Here here's Steve and me tasting the prickly pear saison. Okay, so Steve, you have the first fruited beer. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got this. <laughs> and uh, the I get an amber wave of grain too. <laughs> This also took second place in the Arizona, Arizona, which is the way I pronounce it, Arizona uh, Oktoberfest uh, competition. Okay. So, that looks very different. It looks very different. It's it has a pinkish hue. It does have a pinkish hue. Um, so it's the base beer. It's the first beer we drank right. with a fruity addition. Right. Okay. I love their first album. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So. And I'm supposed to pick the fruit. Or? Or not. Yeah, well, yeah, let's give we'll a try. stab at it. We'll give a stab. If you do this, 
if you if you if you pick the fruit that this is or the addition that this is you know you will achieve god status in my book and uh, i will you know carry you around on my shoulders for the okay. rest of the week well <clears throat> i don't have any idea <laughs> shoo <laughs> My shoulders aren't what they used to be. But I'm going to take a stab. I'm going to say, I'm going to say pomegranate. No. <laughs> what is it? You got the first letter right. How about that? Palm, pa, pee. No. Nope. <laughs> pa, poo. <laughs> I'm. Hmm. What are you tasting though? What does it what does it taste like? Describe the the flavor. It's a del- it's, it's a it's a delicious beer. It is delicious. Uh, and and the, and the fruit edition, whatever it is, did, did, has not completely overwhelmed no. the saisani mm-hmm. part of it. Yeah, and it, it it softened it a little bit. It's got a kind of a round sweetness to it. There's a berry likeness to it. You know, I, I said pomegranate because, I'm, frankly, I could see the color of it, and it kind of had that kind of pomegranate-y thing, which I know it's not. So that was just a wild guess. Um, but if I had to really pick, I would have said something. See, it's not it's not acidic enough to be like raspberries, or I don't get an acid thing in it. So I'm sorry. I just don't have any, any idea what this is. Well, I, I thought it was going to be tough. Prickly pear. Oh, duh. <laughs> now you can't say you can't I say no, duh no. to prickly pear. No, I, I can't say duh to it in terms of the flavor because you're right. But the color, I mean, I've seen things done with prickly pear juice and stuff like that, and the color is exactly right for that. And, and I and I will admit that part of why I was I was like, what would make it turn this color? And the only thing I could come up with was pomegranate and prickly pear. But it's very tasty. Yeah, it's great. I have like have it you lot. ever have you ever had a chance to? To cook or play with a, a prickly pear fruit, <laughs> I've I actually when I was a little boy I lived in Colorado and we would sled down this hill and we would frequently crash into prickly pears. <laughs> Not fun. Which explains the limp. It does. <laughs> uh, no, I have I've never cooked with with uh, cactus. I've eaten them. They're called Napoles, I think. I hope I said that right. But uh, that's pretty common on in in a lot of Mexican food. And so I've eaten them before, but um, I think this is from the, there's a fruit, I think, that, that grows mm-hmm. off of it, and yeah. uh, that's what this would be. <clears throat> uh, yeah, there's no way in a thousand years I would have guessed that, but wow, that's really good, though. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Beer, that was beer number, number one. two. Number two. <laughs> number one. Well, it was test number one. Oh, okay. So very nice. And once again, that took place uh, second place in the Arizona uh, Oktoberfest competition. And uh, very nice. Um, we thought that uh, that that was probably the, the most balanced uh, of the beers that we had, the fruit beers that we had that was, you know, kind of played with the fruit and the Saison characteristics. I guess I'm spoiling the rest of the, the other two. But uh, I, I, we thought that 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 was a nice compliment uh to the style and to the fruit well thank you is that do you think that that's because um you said that the the secondary fermentation was less active do you think that that was because there was maybe less sugar in the fruit it it could have been but also i feel that the prickly pear fruit itself has a very subtle flavor to it and um I think that's a lot, you know, some fruits are, you smell them, you can taste them, you know right off the top of your head exactly what that fruit is. With with the prickly pear, it's just such a subtle flavor, and maybe that's why. Well, Steve makes a trek out to uh, uh, to Santa Fe, uh, New Mexico, every year, so maybe I'm going to have to tell him to get, get some prickly pear fruit or jelly or something out there so that uh, I can taste the stuff um, in in more of the pure form and maybe brew with it too. Uh, so next is a more traditional uh, fruit that we're more of us are familiar with and that's raspberry. How did you was did you handle the raspberries any differently from the prickly pear? Uh, sure. So I, I 
after, of course, listening to the juicer experiment, I, in, in the recommendation of the frozen fruit, I went to the grocery store and I bought frozen raspberries. And it turns out they had one pound packages of frozen raspberries, which is perfect. And I thawed them out. I squished them in the bag with my hands as much as possible and poured and, you know, cut the corner off of the bag and squirted it right into the fermenter. <laughs> That's awesome. It worked really well. Um, I like that beer the best, actually. It turned out very well. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> but this one, uh, let's see, I'm, lo I'm looking. The uh, So this one did not win an award. Uh, I, so you, I never entered it, and I should have. Oh, well, there you go. I was going to say that, that one, you know, the judges were missing on that one. Uh, but uh, I guess I should ask how much... Um, did you lose in the sort of fruit debris with each of these batches? That's a great question. I'm glad you mentioned it. Um, that's, that's one component that I normally, when brewing, I try to compensate for. So I'll brew a slightly larger batch if I know I am going to have a lot of hops in the, in the kettle or what it may be. So in this case, um, I, I didn't compensate for it, unfortunately, but I lost, I would say at least 10%. Hmm. Well, that's, that's not bad, um, considering uh, some of the some of the beers that I've done with a lot of uh, of trube or debris. You know, some of the freaky stuff that I do. I think <laughs> <laughs> I'd be happy with ten percent. I think that's okay. Um, so here we go. Let's. Are we ready to talk about the uh, talk about the raspberry? Are we ready to go to the raspberry tasting? Let's do it. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Okay, now this one looks similar to the uh, previous. Yes, it does. In fact, I think it's probably a twi a twick, a trick question. <laughs> it's a twick question. <laughs> <laughs> we honestly haven't had that much to drink. No. I swear. Um, it's a little darker. It's a different beer. So we haven't tasted this yet, although I'm doing that right now. Ooh, it smells different. Mm, it smells different. I hate it when people say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> about your food? Yeah, well, or about your person? By me. <laughs> you walk in the room, it smells different. <laughs> when they start whistling the Old Spice theme when you walk in the room, that's a bad sign. <laughs> um, I think this is a cherry beer. Mm. It's very, It's really good. Oh, I can tell you it's not cherry. Get out! That tastes like cherries to me. It does taste like cherries, now that you put that in my head. But um, it ain't cherries. Okay, well, let me try again. <clears throat> I, you know, I don't know. It could be raspberries. <clears throat> ding, 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 yeah. ding, 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 ding. Second guess. I figured it was one of the two, and I said cherries first. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Second guess. <clears throat> but this is very... Prickly pear. <laughs> we can't go back in time. From now on, I'm just guessing everything is prickly pear because it could be. <laughs> no, it's raspberry. Yeah, it's really, really it's, well done. Yeah. What I like about this is um, I've had a lot of raspberry beers over the years. A few of them I've made. Um, some of them have been quite good. Some not so good. Uh, both mine and other people's. And uh, what I like about this is that the fruit, the really clean. Uh, raspberry fruit note really comes through strongly. Um, even if you think it tastes like cherries, it's still a really clean, fruity flavor and not that kind of acidic, um, I don't know, I don't even know how to describe it, but sometimes when I taste a fruit beer from raspberries, there's a kind of acidic bite to it that I, I don't, I'm not that crazy about. Um, but this one does a really good job of bringing the fruit out without that, uh, in my opinion, off flavor. Now, let me ask you, <clears throat> if someone were to tell you that that was a Saison, do you taste any Saisoniness? <clears throat> well, I, I guess I do because I know, but um, it's such a straightforward, you know, the, the, the beer doesn't have, the base beer doesn't have any notes that are just over the top about it. But yeah, I still get some of that little bit of barnyard at, at the mm. back end, and um, <laughs> that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. <laughs> well, 
I, it's a delicious beer, but I don't know. I don't. I don't get a lot of the funk in this one. I think it's very. Um, it has a dry finish. Yeah. And I think that it, while it's a tasty beer, I don't know that it. I, I don't know that the saisoniness has. Um, for me, everybody's palate's different, but uh, on the earlier one, on the prickly pear, I got more of the kind of saison kind of stuff going on. And you're going back, and there's even more. More of the original saison. If you wanted to try a little bit of that, I think you're right. I'm going to agree with you on this because I just went back and tasted all three of these beers, and uh, the first two definitely um, exhibit a more of a farmhouse ale character. I guess the raspberries there must have been enough sweet, enough fruit mm-hmm. going on that it, it kind of masks some of that or balances it out. Maybe is a better way to put it. <clears throat> I didn't mean to talk you out of your opinion. No, you didn't, because I still, I was just going to say, I still stand by that I still get a little bit of that. But I have to... You still get a little bit of barnyard on the back end. Well, that's right. (laughs) Because uh, (laughs) there's so many jokes, but I can't do any of them. Um, But, you know, it's like, I I know that it's a Cezanne. I've had the the other, the base one. And so I guess what what I'm trying to answer to myself is... If you just poured me a glass of this and I didn't know anything about it, would I just think it was a, a really uh, mild wheat beer or something like that that you had turned into a fruit beer? And I guess I'd say yes. Mm. But it's still good. Very tasty. Heck yeah. Right? That was beer number, number three. three. Okay. So Steve and I said that uh, that this beer was very tasty. The fruit came through. Uh, but again, less uh, Saison character uh, than the prickly pear. Um, but still a, a, a very nice fruit beer. Yeah, I'd agree. I, I, I think with the prickly pear, if you first smell it and taste it, you can't really grasp what that flavor is. It's just very unique, you know, unless you've had it. Uh, with the raspberry, it jumped right out at, at me, at least. When I smelled it and tasted it, so it's certainly raspberry. There's no question. Yeah, Steve got it on the second guess. So yes. first, first he said cherry, and then he said raspberry. And I, and I could see that. I mean, once he said cherry... You know that you know how the power of suggestion works. That that nugget was stuck in my brain, so I can mm-hmm. definitely see that as well. Um, so again, a very very tasty beer. And now the 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 third fruit beer and the last one on the list is blackberry. Yes, that's correct. And at the grocery store, the blackberries were right next to the raspberries. So why not? Here we go. <laughs> and they're already frozen. <laughs> that's correct. So. Again, the same method, um, thawed the bag, uh, smooshed them up in the bag, and then cut the corner off and um, squirted it right into the fermenter. Well, there we go. Let's, let's go back to Steve's house for the final tasting, the blackberry. Okay, they're all, they all have sort a- of the, if they were on one of those <clears throat> one of those pieces of paper with all the, the color swatches from, yeah. you know, the paint store, they'd yeah. be all in the same piece of paper. Yeah. Although this one is a little, I'd has my, a little more orange to it, maybe. Yeah, because I do my gutters and the doors in this one, <laughs> and then I do, I do the main walls in the in the second beer. Uh, so that's our color analysis. That's right. <laughs> uh, this one's the lightest. They all have the same kind of pinkish hue, so the fruits are uh, in the blue and purple realm. Yeah, I think the original beer is maybe shining through in this a little bit. It's a little mm-hmm. more tan than the others, a little yeah. more brown. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, oh, I gotta say, all these, all four of these beers are really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, first impression of this beer is that. Uh, the fruit character is the least prominent of the three that have had fruit put in them, mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. I might change once it warms a bit, and I've, I've had it in my palate for a moment. But uh, it's very effervescent. Mm-hmm. I think, I, I want to say more than the other two. I'm not sure about that, but it just really struck me as, like, it was really bright. And, boy, I'm resisting the jokes about, <laughs> it's really bright. And... Uh, uh, I don't get I don't get a strong sense of any particular kind of fruit with this. I'm curious to see what it is. Let me taste it again. What do you think? It's pretty dry. Yeah, it is. There's a bit of fruit. 
<laughs> I get the fruit on the front end. <laughs> As opposed to the back end. <laughs> you get the barnyard in the back end. <laughs> I get the fruit on the front end. <laughs> That's uh, but it's, um, yeah, it's not as fruity. It's not as sweet as the others. Mm-mm. It is still a good beer. I it's think really I would drink, beer. I would, it's very refreshing. It's very refreshing. Uh, well, you know, the beer is not about hops. You don't get it, you get, a, you get some sense of hop in the first beer, but the fruit really covers the hops up, I think, in the other three beers. It's not a bad thing. It's just a comment. Um, this one is, I think, appears to be the most effervescent it feels really effervescent it's really bright um it's not sweet like the raspberry beer had a sweetness to it that Mm -hmm. was really delightful this one doesn't have that but it's still somehow a little softer maybe so i mean the fruit tends to soften the flavor to Mm me regardless of the kind of fruit it is any guess well let me let me have another sip before i (laughs) before i comment (laughs) it's tough I doubt I could do it if it were me. If it were I, excuse me. It's a linking verb. <laughs> you use a subjective, <laughs> a subjective pronoun with the linking verb. I'm just, I'm just stalling to give you time. I don't have any idea. Maybe, um, boy, I just, I really don't know. Raisins? I don't still know. What if I said blackberry? I would. Be okay with that. Because <laughs> it's Blackberry. And Brian says the Blackberry version might be the Blackberry version might be funky. Uh but it is oh he he did a strawberry and a kiwi version, mm-hmm. uh but they didn't fare too well, he said, so he didn't send them. Uh the, they were gushers, apparently. This one foamed up a little bit when we opened it. Yeah, but he said me. he said the blackberry version might be funky as well. But I decided to let you be the judge of that. I don't think it's <clears> funky; <throat> it's dry. Yeah, <clears throat> it seems like. And I apologize for clearing my throat so darn much. I I blame your cooking, <laughs> but um, uh, I'm just was saving some for later. <laughs> but the, <laughs> but it but it is dry as if. Maybe something additional had been going on. Maybe something mm-hmm. on the fruit or something. But it, it is not. It doesn't taste contaminated. No, no, it, it, it tastes clean to me. Uh, it's just, it's just a little brighter. It's a little. Um, I like it quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm gonna surely be criticized for this, but now that I know what it is, I do kind of taste the blackberry taste. <laughs> I mean, uh-huh. I kind of go, yeah, okay, that's blackberries. I, I mean. Yeah, my my grandmother. When I was a kid, here's what we wore an onion on our belt because <laughs> that was the fashion. That was the fashion. <laughs> but we, we we went blackberry picking a lot, and we ate a lot of blackberries when I was a little bitty kid in the Ozarks in Missouri. And we got and you pick blackberries, and Grandma would make a blackberry cobbler, and she'd make blackberry preserves and all that. And I, you know, I I get that flavor out of this, even if it's very very subtle. And then the next day you scratched your legs off because of all the chiggers. Oh, my God. Don't even get me started. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is about blackberries and things that like to bite you on the leg. But uh, yeah, yeah don't go blackberry pick, picking without your uh, proper insecticide. Well, there you go. That's our lesson for today. <laughs> that was beer number four. four. And uh, we've got the, the center of it is that we've got a lot left in the bottles. So we may be putting mm. those back in the fridge. But um well, uh, um, or you may be, you live here, so I live here. You, you might be finishing them off. Well, uh, I want to thank Brian for sending this these to us. I really enjoyed all four beers. I think it's a good testament to good brewing mm-hmm. because he did a good job. Fruit can ruin your beer sometimes. You know, yeah. you can put some fruit in there, and, and if it's infected or whatever happens, it can just kind of go south on you. But all four of these beers are very drinkable beers. They are somewhat different. Um, I'm not going to tell you which one I think is my favorite, but I really like that raspberry beer a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, right if you get work. <laughs> and hang by your thumbs. <laughs> so, it's interesting how, that, how, I guess, the yeast and the fruit interact on these, on these beers. Um, the blackberry was, again, a good beer, but a bit more dry uh, than the others. So I'm just wondering, um, you know, if there was just more fermentation that was going on uh, with that beer. 
It's very possible, and I think the blackberries may have carried something along with them that uh, helped dry it out even more, or at least gave the perception of being dry. So you're saying some additional little bugs it's in the possible. blackberries? I think it's possible. I'm not sure how they flash freeze them or what may happen, but... <laughs> have you ever have you ever been blackberry picking? Um, yes, back uh, where I'm from is Connecticut, and there's blackberries everywhere. And uh, very familiar with picking blackberries. Do you and, get uh, chiggers and ticks up there? Lots of ticks. I, I'm not sure I know what a chigger is. Oh well, count your blessings, because <laughs> 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 we got we got a few we could send you. Uh, <laughs> uh, keep them in Arkansas. <laughs> um, so there's there's a couple of beers that uh, that rounded out the set that didn't make it. What happened with those? Yeah, so let's, let's talk about those a little bit. Um, at the grocery store, right next to the blackberries, were strawberries. And I thought, you know, this just sounds like a really nice idea. And um, I, I heard of somebody doing a strawberry lager, which sounded quite delightful. And I believe it did very well at that Sam Adams long shot competition. So I thought, that, yeah, that sounds really good. Let's do a, just do a strawberry. And um, same method, squished it up, squirted it in, and... Um, of all the beers, that one re-fermented, if you will, the most. So there was uh, the most amount of available sugars to the yeast with the strawberries. And that was quite active and violent, if you will. And um, But once that beer was, um, you know, I bottled it up. It, it tasted great out of the fermenter. But after bottling, there's something. I opened every single bottle, and every one of them was a gusher. Uh. Was something in the strawberries didn't work. Um, I did the same process on all the beers. I just, I'm not sure. Or maybe it worked a little too well. There. <laughs> Again, some little little critters uh, hitching a ride on the strawberries. Uh, I think so. Yeah, I don't know if a better process or if anybody else has some recommendations of what to do. But um, yeah, for me, the strawberries didn't work. And then what was the last one? The last one I did was a kiwi. And... Um, you know, at Costco, I saw kiwis on sale, and these were, you know, uh, nice, ripe co- uh, kiwis. And I peeled them and sliced them. Uh, I did freeze them ahead of time to break down the cell wall. I- I'm not sure that it was the beer was bad at all. It was just such an awful flavor. For whatever reason, it didn't, didn't work for me. Huh. Yeah, but they were not gushers. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the flavor can- combination just didn't work out. Yeah, I, I couldn't. Uh, I didn't want to finish the glass. Let's put it that way. That's interesting, and and it and it's a it's another argument for brewing small batches. Uh, whether you brew from the beginning as a small batch, or whether you do what you did and brew a normal size batch, quote unquote, and then split it up, uh, and then try some experiments with those smaller uh, batches at that point. Uh, if you're trying something new, rather than investing all the time and money into a full batch, either chop it up or start small and, and see what you get. Yeah, I, I agree. It didn't hurt my feelings too bad to dump the strawberry in the kiwi. You know, <laughs> I, uh, three out of five isn't bad, I suppose, with an experiment. Yeah, no kidding. And especially when, when those that uh, that you sent were so tasty. Oh, so, thank you. So what's the, what's the next one? I mean, what, what's, what's next on the uh, experiment list? Um, I, I really enjoyed the raspberry version so much that I would brew a five-gallon batch of that. I absolutely loved that beer. It was very dry, very effervescent. Um, it just, to me, that was an appealing fruit beer. I think sometimes fruit beers are not appealing, but that was a beer I really enjoyed. Um, I think it also might be nice to try with a couple different base styles, too. You know, maybe a blonde or maybe a, um, a very mild pale ale. Well, you've got a good point. I mean, because uh, I mean, if if the fruits worked well with the saison, uh, there are all kinds of other beer styles. Um, and you know, who's to say you have to stick with lighter beer styles? Dark beer styles would probably uh, fare well as as well. Yeah, exactly. And so, on that note, back at the NHC during uh, club night, I tasted a raspberry soured stout, which was just unbelievable. And the raspberries again jumped right out of the glass. You could smell them. You could, it was very definable. Wow. 
So are you going to club? Are you going to uh, the conference next year? It's still up in the air. Um, you know, with work being quite busy and uh, two little ones running around, we'll see what happens. I hear you. Well, it's luckily for me, it's part of the job. So <laughs> you do have a good job, James. <laughs> Not complaining. Uh, and you're you're part of the reason why it's good. I appreciate your your uh, brewing these beers, trying the experiment, and sharing them with us. I, I really appreciate it, Brian. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate the opportunity, and it's uh, it's quite a pleasure to be on the show with you, James. Well, thanks very much again to Brian for sending the beers, and to Steve for donating his palate again. Uh, I'm planning on trying to brew a Saison-ish beer this week if the uh, impending snowpocalypse doesn't derail my plans. And uh, these beers were definitely good inspiration. Don't forget to send us your brewing disaster stories. Uh, send your stories, questions, show suggestions, whatever, to james at basicbrewing.com or just fill out the contact form on basicbrewing.com. And please don't forget to tell us where you're from. Our basic brewing growler bags are available in our shop. Protect your precious homebrew and craft beers. You take it from place to place. Check out our support link where you can throw a couple of bucks into the tip jar by subscribing financially to our podcasts. Be sure to check out our DVDs, Extract Brewing and Partial Mashing, Stepping into All Grain, Low-Tech Lagering and Decoction Mashing, and Introduction to Wine Kits. You can find them all and on sale at our site. Uh, we got combo deals to save you a few bucks if you want to buy more than one DVD at a time. And you can check out our Basic Brewing shirts in the store, too. Our Brewer's Logbooks are on the store as well. They're going out the door. Get one under your tree. Keep track of up to 50 batches of beer. You can see a listing of the fine folks across the country who sell our DVDs on basic, basicbrewing.com. And if there isn't a vendor in your area, you can order them online in our online shop at basicbrewingshop.com. Thanks to everybody who's continued to click our Amazon.com link, especially during this busy, busy holiday season. We greatly appreciate the support there. Greatly. Our featured products this week that were purchased through the link are Grandpa's Brands, Pine Tar Soap, and Totally Bamboo Laser Etched Growler Shaped Cutting and Serving Board, 15 inch. Cool. Thanks again, everybody. And remember, I can't tell who bought what, so no worries there. Just click on the Amazon.com logo on our site the next time you feel like Amazon shopping. We greatly, greatly appreciate your support. And don't forget, you can also join the American Homebrewers Association and subscribe to Brew Your Own Magazine through the associate links on basicbrewing.com as well. That's all until next time. Until then, thanks for listening, everybody. I'm James Spencer, production help for Basic Brewing Radio, and our website is provided by Kelly Dodson. Basic Brewing Radio is a production of Active Voicing. We'll talk to you next time, everybody. So long.